heavens flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. When I found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing. Darkness closes in, Lord. Still, I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. morning and welcome to this morning's service um, of the word um, notices for today um, first of all thank you for everybody that came that managed to make to the um, AGM um, and especially thank you for those people who um, volunteered um, to be part of the PCC and to be church warden We've still got three vacancies for Church Warden, so please do continue to pray about that. There's one for St. Thomas's and two for St. Margaret's vacant, so pray and ask God whether that's something he's calling you to do. And if you want to know more, um, ask me or Phil and we'll give you a bit more information about what the job entails, but largely it tends to be defined by the skills and the abilities of the person in post. Um, so uh, if you don't feel you can be an Ed or a Jonathan, um, um, don't worry about that. That's not what you're called to be. Um, you're called to be um, who you are. And if God's calling you to that post, he wants you in that post. Um, other notices, um, not many really. Uh, we've now got a few poppies that will be um, you'll be able to pick up from church for a small donation, which we'll send off to the British Legion, or you can go online 
to the British Legion and um, donate there for a poppy appeal. And I'd encourage you um, to, to think about whether that you can support that course. Uh, next week um, is All Saints and uh, we'll be um, from now on on the first Sunday of the month we're going to try it and do that um, all together service where we bring together in one service um, uh, St Thomas's and St Margaret's and those of you online um, so that's what we're doing next week and from then on in November what I'm hoping to do is stream the Sunday service live from St Margaret's because I think I've solved the internet problem that we were having to not be able to do that. Um, that will relieve some pressure on those people who have to do the online service um, and also give you a chance to see more people um, than me leading worship and preaching. Um, so and Christmas, uh, look out for what we're doing in Christmas. We will have a carol service of sorts. There will be a Christingle service of sorts, although we probably won't be meeting together for some of those. There'll be times when we are having church service. So keep a look out for that and also think about how you can help that. Let's um, spend a few moments of silence as we um, realise that we are in the presence of the beautiful living God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We have come together as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving to hear and receive his holy word to bring before him the needs of the world to ask his forgiveness of our sins and to seek his grace that through his son Jesus Christ we may give ourselves to his service and let's continue in our preparation to worship the living God by saying together the prayer of preparation Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Although it's my desire to magnify his holy name. My actual life quite often falls short of that desire. And so I'm grateful that we now have a time of confession when I can bring those times of failure towards God and ask his forgiveness. So let's bring our sins to the God of grace. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the Lord enrich us with his grace and nourish us with his blessing. The Lord defend us in trouble and keep us from all evil. The Lord accept our prayers and absolve us from our offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. 
Amen. And the collect for this Bible Sunday. Merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and in uncertainty. That trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, normally on the online service we, we go straight into a song now, um, but this is Bible Sunday and we're, we're going to have three readings, so we're going to have the first reading before that, before a song. And the first reading is Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 1 to the beginning of verse 4 and then 8 to 12. All people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the, scri told the scribe Isaiah to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the law had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. The scribe Ezra stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the purpose. So they read from the book from the law of God with interpretation. They gave sense, the sense, so the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord, your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Be quiet. For this day is holy, do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing because they had understood the words that were declared to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing now and before we go on to the other readings. We're going to sing, We Bow Thou and confess. Please. 
do confess that you are Lord in this place. This place wherever we are at, but mostly this place, our hearts and mind. And as we ask, as we continue to worship, that you will reveal your presence to us and speak words of understanding to us. Amen. We're going to carry on now with today's readings and the next reading is from Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to in which indeed you were called in the one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your heart sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our final reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 30 to 35. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with powers and great glory and he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other from the fig tree learn its lesson as soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves you know that summer is near so also when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I thought it was right on um, on Bible Sunday that we'd um, get a good portion of the readers and uh, reading set aside and really I've just not only um, left out the Psalms. So let's have a look at them and see what they say to us. First of all, the Nehemiah reading. Well, um, let's put this into context. Um, people of Israel have been in exile in Babylon for um for a long time and nehemiah had come back and rebuilt jerusalem and scholars think that um, the bible as we know it written down 
occurred around about this time when they were in Babylon or just after Babylon. So this may well have been an account of the first time the written word was read out. Up to them, it had been a um, narrative told through the generations. Now, they were a lot better at that than we would be now because we trust on written word. And so it didn't slip and change. But they they chose from the stories that they had about God to write down the ones that we have in the Old Testament and the book of the law. So these people knew the stories. They would have heard the stories. They would have known the law. They would have heard it. They knew how they were supposed to worship. But as it was read out and as it was explained to him something happened they suddenly realized their position and they grieved now it's difficult to know exactly what was going on in their heads because it doesn't say wait what but from my experience, where I've been at times like this, where I've, in my Christian life, where I've just slipped away, made errors, I know what sort of feelings I had. See, when I'm away from God, he's never away from me. But when I'm ignoring his presence, The things that happen to me, I blame on anybody and everybody, apart from me. I'm always unlucky or hard done to or whatever the, the, the case may be. People hate all oh, the grass is always greener on the other side. But when I return to God, I realise that really I had everything I needed, everything I needed, because God was with me. And the only thing I'd forgotten was who I was, a child of God. And I suspect that's what hit these people as they heard the word being read out and as it was explained to them that they suddenly remembered that they were the chosen ones. They were the chosen race, the blessed of all people, because God had chosen them. And what they'd done and the way they th thought hit them and they cried. They mourned, but, but Nehemiah and Ezra and the Levites knew that it wasn't a time for crying. You see, when we realise who we are, it's not a time for mourning about what we've missed and what we didn't do when we were away from God, but a time to rejoice because we were with God, responding to his word. And so they sent him to party. How often do we just rejoice because we are the chosen, the chosen ones of God. And how often do we do with these people and moan and moan that the church isn't what it used to be? That our lives weren't quite what they ought to be rather than realising that we are blessed. Blessed. Because we are the chosen ones of God.
and Colossians takes that theme up about us being the chosen ones, holy and beloved, and encourages us to live that way, to live as if we were the victorious church. To bear with each other as we each try to find our way through to have patience with our brothers and sisters in the same way that we hope that they will have patience to us. And why can we do that? Why can we have patience? Why can we have humility and meekness? Why can we show kindness even when we're being persecuted? Because we are one with the Lord Jesus Christ. And his peace can therefore rule in our hearts. But we have to remember. We have to remember that's the truth. So often we forget. We push our lives in such a way that we just forget that. God was there. We forget that he died and was victorious on the cross. We forget we have a rich well of peace that lies within us. And we live the way of the world. The selfish world. The world where there is no compassion or kindness. Or it's a rare thing. The world where everybody has to live for themselves and no humility is shown. How do we remember? We remember by letting his living word dwell within us. By reading the scriptures, but not just reading them, allowing them to be carved in our hearts. And rejoicing. Rejoicing. Because God is with us and he has put his word there within us. If only we would listen to it and respond to it. And our gospel points to a time when he will return again in victory. And everything will change that we know. It'll be a shock for us. But a glorious shock. And that word that he has planted within us, that sustains us and gives us peace and allows us to live lives like him, is eternal. And will take us through the fires and into a new life, a glorious life. Feed often on the goodness of the word and try to understand it. If you don't ask questions, don't worry about not understanding. When you read something and a question comes up, that's a good thing. Questions are always good. Our God is not afraid of truth. He's not afraid of questions. Try and get that word so planted within you with so much understanding that people see that Christ is in you and marvel at our glorious living God and all that he can do. 
and those words he plants will not pass away. Gonna move on now by um, declaring what we do believe. And it's a response thing, so it's the response is we believe and trust in Him. Um, it's um, on that side, of it's on the words will come up. Um, so just to remind you. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of being, all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We not only believe and trust in him, we know that we can come before him and bring our needs to him because he has encouraged us to do so. And so we're going to pray. Let's pray. Lord, your word is a lantern to our feet, the light upon our path. Word of truth, you set your church ablaze with the fire of your love. Feed and inspire the lives of your servants to walk by this light. Bless and guide translators and scholars of the scriptures that we may live a lively and godly faith. Word of justice. Your command sets the oppressed free and calls rulers to account. Raise up prophets and counsellors of wisdom and insight. Give courage to all who speak for the voiceless and proclaim your liberation. word of hope. You are the bedrock of existence and our ultimate goal. Let your grace flow to nourish and sustain all people. Gather into one body, people of every race and language, that songs of rejoicing may resound throughout the world. Word of comfort and consolation. You restore what is diminished and recover what has been lost. Give solace to the weary and mend the broken. Pour out your oil of healing on all our wounds and afflictions. Word of life. You turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Raise, we pray, all who have died.
turn our sorrow into dancing and tears into laughter once more. We ask this for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll carry on in prayer by saying the um, diocesan prayer together. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit, we may, as a diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's round up this session of prayer by joining together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. just got the blessing to come now um, and um, then we'll um, have the dismissal and our final hymn um, which I've brought in a choir to help us sing. Um, I hope um, you'll have a good week. Um, we're now in tier three of course which means you're perhaps restricted on some of the things you could do. But always remember, God is with you. God is with you wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And he, he loves you. And you are chosen by him. So may God give to you and all those you love his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy, in this world and the next and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So we're going to finish with the hymn Great is Thy Faithfulness. God bless you.